Hello, hello everyone. It's it's Taylor. I'm sorry. Oh, Taylor. Sorry. sorry <laughs> no problem. Sorry. I was actually gonna be named Tyler, but my mom said no. It's Taylor. Taylor. Got it. Yeah. See, and I I practiced before we yeah, started. Yeah, you did. And what happened? Just in my mind, it suddenly switched. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Taylor. Taylor. Mm. <laughs> All right. And uh, so we'll just wait a couple minutes while people join. Sure, sure. I love your, your outfit today. Tell us about your ensemble today. Oh, my favorite hat from Lack of Color. It's an Australian hat brand. I got it on sale because usually they're super expensive. <laughs> And this vest I picked up at the clothing store oh, or nice. secondhand store in Osaka. Look at that. Some glasses I found at that same store. <laughs> and my favorite is this little earring with a picture of me, my dad, and my sister when I was a baby. So oh, that's gorgeous. I can't see it. I yeah. just made it into an earring for fun. Well, when <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen that for ages, but I used to, mm. when I was growing up, everybody would have those lockets, yep. you know, yeah. and have a yeah. family photo or someone special inside. I love that idea in an earring. Mm, me Good. too. So I have three of them. When my grandma passed away, my cousin sent me some of her stuff and there was three. So I made two into earrings and I guess I could have a necklace as the other one. Wow. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, let's start. So mm -hmm. I'm very excited about your ideas mm, and thank you. whether whether you're able to launch them as a proper business or not. I think the the ideas are so important and so worth talking about. Mm. So thank you so much for joining today and sharing your innovation and your <laughs> insights with us. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. So how did your journey in fashion start? How did you get interested in fashion? Mm, I would say I have a grandmother who is super fashionable. My grandma, me in Seattle, um, I'm from Seattle, and uh, we would go thrifting almost every weekend. Like, I mean, four generations of my family have been going to the same thrift store. <laughs> um and so I, we would go thrifting all the time and it was always really fun. And it was just kind of natural to like pick things up. So I, I just never felt like I looked like anyone else. I always had my own style, although I wanted to be, you know, when you're a kid, you want to be like everyone else. You want to fit in with the crowd. But there was definitely some things I'd pick up from the thrift store. I'm like, oh, man, this is cool. This is just so cool. Um, and then I'm, I'm really crafty. Um, and so whatever I got from the thrift store or if things got too small and I wasn't going to pass them down to my sisters, uh, I would just cut it up and like, sew and make it something new. <laughs> so lots of like jeans turning into purses. <laughs> that was a thing for a while. Yeah. Oh, that's great though. So you would say that even growing up, you kind of had this idea that reusing older clothes or seeking out vintage was kind of interesting and fun was it hmm. mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah and I know some people don't like thrifting because it can be overwhelming and especially if it's not a good thrift store it's not going to be organized well um but the hunt is what I live for I mean I've because I've been doing it for so long I love it so much and so it's not such a big deal to me oh, mm. great and mm. you're in Osaka so how is the scene in Osaka are you able to find a lot of interesting vintage shops or secondhand mm. shops there? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Osaka has a big thrifting um, scene, actually, secondhand clothing scene. Um, one of my favorite vintage stores is Pop Up Hello Darling, and that's um, actually the photo shoot for them, for that boutique me and Rosie um, collaborated on. Rosie from Trick or Treat Vegan Sweets, um, and that was amazing. I've, I've bought maybe four things from them already. Um, and then there's a store across from there um, and it's called Leyline Clothing in Homachi. And they he has a lot of men's clothing, a little oversized, but he has women's clothing too. And I found a beautiful plum velvet coat. Good God, it was beautiful. I was like, and this is mine. <laughs> I have to have it. Um, and I used it in a challenge actually recently with um some fishnets and socks and i really loved that look yeah mm -hmm. i'm showing one of your styles on the street of osaka mm -hmm. 
It looks like a mm -hmm. short kimono dress and fishnet mm -hmm. on the street. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that was actually in my neighborhood. I was, um, it was a date night with my partner. And so I was like, oh, I really want to wear this. And I put that white shirt underneath and I put on my favorite beret and I was like, yeah, this is a look. I love it so much. <laughs> And uh, actually, there was a man who uh, he was he looked at me and I was like, oh, no, is it just, you know, the gaijin thing? And then I looked at him and he was actually really fashionable, this kind of older guy. And I was like, nice. Yeah, you look good, too, sir. <laughs> That's great. How yeah. has the response been from locals? Do you get do you get a lot of fashionable locals in Osaka who kind of respect because I find that, you know, a lot of Japanese people, especially young people, are quite fashionable and mm -hmm. really know how to put things together and mm -hmm. make it look really unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really inspired by like Japanese fashion from the youth specifically, um, especially like the outliers, like the skateboarders and the the Yankees. You know, I think their I think their style is really cool, and they definitely push those boundaries. Um, so Amimura is like a really big hub, like America town. It's a really big hub for just skateboarders and just cool fashion. Um, and so I like hanging out there because I feel like that's, those are my people. <laughs> Even if I can't speak to them because my Japanese is terrible, but like that, that scene is really cool. They're doing some cool stuff. They, um, I definitely get some like, you know, I think people, some people definitely like it. I think others are just like, whoa, it's a guy gene. So like, I don't know what they're thinking, <laughs> but, like, but uh, it's, I think the response has been pretty good for my friends and my like Japanese English speaking friends. They're like, you're doing some cool stuff. I'm like, thank you guys. That's great. <laughs> and it's, it's so fun. Uh, we have a comment from Elizabeth Ann on Facebook says, love those mm -hmm. colors. Oh, Thanks, thank Elizabeth. you. Yeah. So from the retro photo shoot that you guys did, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. can you describe some of the clothes? Did you help style and put that together? It was so fun. I did. Let me take a. I'm gonna take a look over here. Um, yeah, I did, and oh, it was great, and it was such a good challenge because I was like. I want to mix it with modern, um, like, can I bring some other clothes in? And she was like, oh, I'd really like to use like what I have. And I'm like, okay, challenge time. Um, and my favorite um, ensembles were, uh, I think Rosie. Rosie had this beautiful like purple skirt and this white sweater and I loved it so, so much. Um, and it, I felt like it was very me. I added personal touches. Like I always have a head accessory, like a scarf or a hat. So you can kind of see that in the berets and the scarves that some of the girls are wearing. Um, Elise, um, the beautiful lady with the Afro, she has like a, this beautiful Dior skirt with this yellow top. And I was like, oh my God, this is vintage Dior from the seventies. The quality, amazing. The size, tiny, <laughs> tiny. It's so tiny. And I was like, oh, if only I could fit this. Like, I mean, that, that shop um, has a lot of vintage Dior from the seventies. A woman was like, here you are. If you can sell it, just give me a little bit and you know, and we'll do it like that. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have to get some of this Dior stuff in there because I mean, where do you find 70s Dior? Like, it's it's a gold mine, you know? Yeah. Um, That's really interesting. And, like, with vintage, uh, high-end brand stuff, mm. um, I, I notice in Japan, they really like the brands, right? Like, yeah. even at the secondhand yeah. shops, if your tag that you bring something in, it has a brand that they recognize, especially mm. a high-end brand, they'll give you more money for it. You know, like yeah. the places like yeah. Second Street or something. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. people who shop there, they want to buy those brand items. Mm -hmm. And But there actually is a lot of sense to that. It's not just about the idea of fashion. It actually, mm. those brands traditionally have been built to last. Yep. Right? They can mm -hmm. be passed on to generations, which is mm. lovely, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and then the other thing with Second Street, though, is like, in Japan, if they don't recognize the brand or there isn't, you know, a, a label on it, it, they'll mark it super cheap. So I have a leather backpack, a leather purse, five dollars. 
and it's real leather. And so I don't mind getting secondhand leather because I'm like, I mean, it's just better than going in the trash. Like it's going to get used. I was just like, I think this is real leather. And I checked with my partner and he was like, yeah, that's real. And I'm like, oh my gosh, $5? Because there isn't a brand on it. So look out for that. That's a top tip. <laughs> that is a good tip. Yeah, I, I, if I go to Second Street or other vintage stores, and there isn't a label or, you know, mm. but I just, I don't really look for that. I'm just looking for things yeah. that are A, going to fit mm -hmm. <laughs> right. and, and kind of fit with what I feel like wearing, what I like to wear. Mm. Um, as I get older, it's got to be comfortable, but it has mm -hmm. to, you know, kind of suit my, my feeling, how yeah. I want to look, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. You have such a great sense of style. I, I've just been watching your videos and I'm like, oh my gosh, this woman, goals. <laughs> Thank goals. you. That's so sweet. Mm. Um, but I, I think I've always kind of, and I see my son doing this now too. He's 18 mm. and he mm -hmm. just kind of goes for things that he likes the look of and plays mm. around. And I really noticed this with your style and your mm. Instagram it's mm -hmm. all about trying new things and it mm -hmm. sounds like you found a great community and mm. you guys challenge each other tell tell mm -hmm. me about that a little bit yeah so I I don't know did I stumble upon this but um on Instagram there's like a community of uh sustainable you know clothing wearers and they're all about wearing what you have you don't have to go out and buy something new. We have so many clothes. You just have to play with them. Um, and so there's some challenges on Instagram that you can join. Um, if you follow the right people, um, you can definitely find them. And so one of my favorite challenges was trends in your closet. So they picked the trends for 2021. And they're like, okay, each day you have to wear this trend. Um, and then everyone will upload their photo and, you know, the, um, the, whoever started the trend would like repost it and, you know, you get a lot of follower, followers that way. And that's kind of how I started my Instagram because I just needed to start. <laughs> I was like, ah, uh, if I just keep waiting for it to be perfect, it's never going to happen. So let me just jump on this challenge and just have fun. And I love it so much. I mean, you, I just love playing in my clothes. And so it, it gave me the opportunity to play in my clothes and figure out different ways to wear what I have already. And I think that's really important. No, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, I want to talk about a few of the looks that you put together and sent mm -hmm. me some great photos. Um, mm -hmm. bef before that, can you introduce your blog? Like what kinds of things would people find if they found your blog? Hmm. So, so far on my blog, um, it's just, uh, you can see my portfolio on there, uh, of the test shoots that I've done and the work with, uh, pop up hello, darling, the boutique, my styling, um, portfolio, but you can also find just tips for, um, fashion, like how to find your signature style. I think a lot of people are like, ah, oh, I don't have a style. Like, you know, what is, you know, what does my, what, what do my clothes say about me? And so I give you some steps to follow, um, to kind of find that. Um, I will be posting, um, how to style howdies. I'm really excited for that one. I just finished the photo shoot for that. Um, just, and, and, you know, little tips. And I also have like a quick guide to the body types. Um, just in case people, you know, don't know, which one they are, you might be a combination, you know, keep that in mind, because there's, there's no set rules for any of this. It's just, you know, so um, stuff like that. For now, I will have some posts about uh, just my time in Japan. And this is probably my last year. So I'll be posting a lot about just the things that I love about this place. It, it gives me time to like slow down and take it in and not just go to work and go to dinner and, you know, just the daily life. But I get to slow down and I love that. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I like that thing about your body type. And I, I think that's something that, you know, you can you can just accept whatever body type you are. There is no perfect mm -hmm. body type. There is good mm -hmm. and bad about everybody's body type, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a good style, like, advice section that you have there and I look forward to more 
exciting. Thank you. Um, <laughs> on your Instagram, you talk about a vintage secondhand Osaka shopping tours. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that idea? That's such a great idea. Thank you. So I, I had this idea because I have a friend who does uh, tours, sake tours. And I was like, huh, what about vintage shopping? Because a lot of people love secondhand shopping. And if they come to Japan, they can book, you know, three hours with me and I can take them to some different areas. Um, so I wanted to do um, a package, a Kyoto package, where I take them to cool spots in Kyoto. Um, including a kimono shop that I really love um, and some other places. And then maybe like a Osaka package um, where I take them around Osaka. Yeah. And so it, it's still in the works because, you know, clearly nobody's traveling right now. But I was thinking maybe locals because locals are traveling. Um, and so I, I kind of wanted to get that. I have to think of there's so many things in my head, so many ideas. And so I have to prioritize and figure out what's what's coming first. But I really want to do the shopping tours, but it might not happen. Well, I, I would just, you know, get some friends together, keep trying mm. it and mm. get, get your roots down and do yeah. do little teasers on yeah. Instagram, you know, short videos that give a tease of your areas where you are. Don't give all mm. your secrets away. Um, yeah. but yeah, definitely just, you know, mm -hmm. start trying it with friends and, and then try it as something people pay a fee for it and get their feedback mm -hmm. and improve mm -hmm. upon it and try it again. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the entrepreneur's model, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm you can, learning you that. can totally mm -hmm. do it. Um, when mm -hmm. I visited LA a couple of years ago and the secondhand vintage shops are definitely a big part of the attraction of certain mm -hmm. areas. Like mm -hmm. it's on the maps. Mm -hmm. People are seeking it out, making it oh, part wow. of their itinerary when yeah. they travel. And this is mainstream. This is not just like a niche group mm -hmm. of people. Those mm -hmm. city streets that have lots of vintage shops, they're right. very popular. You know, so how about yeah. in Seattle as well? It must be. Yeah, there. Um, I think secondhand shopping is really popular. There, it. I mean, there was even a song like called um, "Thrift Store" by um, Macklemore, and he kind of popularized thrifting. And we were all like, "No, no, don't tell everyone. <laughs> They're gonna take all the good stuff." <laughs> <laughs> is that the I want to buy your grandpa's clothes? I love yes, that song. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And he's from Seattle too. So like. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I look incredible. I want your granddad's clothes. I gotta <laughs> pop some tags, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's it. <laughs> that's awesome. But but in Japan, I think we have a bigger mm -hmm. hurdle because we don't mm -hmm. have certain streets which are all these vintage shops or kind of a hippie mm -hmm. area not mm -hmm. really that easy to find so i mm -hmm. think if you start collecting these places you know where they mm -hmm. are you're inside a shop you know which section is best to mm -hmm. check that kind of information that insider tips is really mm -hmm. valuable and there's definitely a market for that so i think so too because it's actually i think osaka is pretty especially amongst the young people secondhand shopping is kind of popular because we have different stores that mix uh, vintage and new and and some local artists too will have their t-shirts in these shops um, and so I think it's popular already amongst the young people so maybe yeah I d definitely think there's a market for it I just gotta start it so yeah you're right I should definitely hit up my friends and like help me out Ed. <laughs> well you've got a great community there I mean we yeah. talked to Rosie who does ah, yes. trick or treat vegan sweets in the series? Mm -hmm. We talked to Ayana Wise yes. and yes. you know the roller skating and the vintage yes. fashion and the vegan yes. sweets. You guys can yeah. all collaborate, have a great event. Speaking yep. of events, tell me of mm -hmm. Vanishing Footprints. Yeah, so that came about um, maybe Hanami two years ago. I wanted to have a little swap because I wanted to give away some things. Um, and so we put it on the flyer, like, hey, bring some clothes if you want to have a clothing swap. I was the only one that brought anything. <laughs> and I get it because there, no, no one has cars here. 
Um, and so we're all bringing our snacks to share and, you know, there's no room for clothes. Um, and so I was like, I think this needs to be an event. I think it needs to be its own thing. Um, and so we made the first Vanishing Footprints event, maybe, I forgot, maybe a year ago, year and a half ago. And it was, it was a success. It, I mean, I couldn't believe it, how many people really wanted to join um, and just kind of just give their clothes a new life. I love thrifting, but getting something for basically free is even better. So uh, I, yeah, I even have a shirt from a friend um, and I love it so much. It's fun seeing your clothes go to someone else, you know, because you can be like, oh, that was mine. Yeah, please, you know, give it a good home. Love it like I couldn't. Um, and it's also an incentive to take care of your clothes if you know that you're going to give it to someone else. Um, whereas if you donate, you're like, I mean, I hope somebody buys it. You, you just really don't know because a lot of that stuff just go to, goes in the landfill. Um, after reading The Conscious Closet, <laughs> that's kind of what I learned. And I was like, huh, maybe clothing swaps are a bit better. Um, and and I, think, I think they are. Um, so we also collab with um, a silkscreen printer, a local silkscreen printer, Coco. And um, she was there. And if you wanted our, our broom recycle design, you can get that. If you wanted something else that she had there, you could... Um, get those as well. So some people would get like a t-shirt or a jacket from the swap and then go to her to put some cool designs on it. And I really liked that. Um, she knows someone that does, that can dye with natural, um, you know, just natural things. I actually have two boxes of onion skins that I want to dye some shirts with. So I, I'm, I'm hoping we can do an event with her as well. But it's, it's such a fun event and anyone can do it. And so I actually just posted on my blog how to host a clothing swap because I think everyone should try it at least once. And you can make them as small and as, as big as you want. I'm hoping to do them back home in Seattle and I would love to do a big one. I think that would take a lot of planning, but I think it would be really fun. And I'm all about community. So if I can bring the community together and I love when people meet other people and I like creating a space where people can network so mm -hmm. that's I'm, awesome. I'm excited for the future yeah that's awesome I mm -hmm. I was before mm -hmm. coronavirus I was doing in-person events called seeking sustainability and part mm -hmm. of it we had a free cycle area a uh, free exchange of clothing nice. or bags or you know and I was like we want to mm -hmm. try it because you mm -hmm. never see this in Japan um, and then anything left over, I would take to Second Street or I would take mm. to one of the used shops and, you know, maybe get a hundred yen for even a giant <laughs> bag. They don't give you much, right? No, but they I don't. Would, I would take the burden because I had a car and I was planning the event. But I, I hear you when you say, you know, people don't really drive around. So carrying around a lot of clothes or things to, for the free cycle, I had mm -hmm. a lot of people bringing stuff but not mm. taking anything. You know? yes. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. But I love your idea and it really Thank sparked you. an idea in me just now. Um, it's mm. so difficult to find natural dye workshops mm. or, and mm -hmm. why not incorporate a free cycle, free exchange of clothing with mm -hmm. someone who can do indigo dyes or like you said, mm natural food dyes like mm -hmm. onion skins there's a khaki like persimmon you can use yeah. the leaves there's a lot of different natural things you can do for dyes as well and mm -hmm. then have that like somebody who's very good at dyeing to give some advice oh you like that white shirt but you could you know change it a little bit tie dye mm -hmm. or use this uh printing technique or something mm -hmm. and then i think you also mentioned you love upcycling of kimono yeah yeah so you could have i mean if it's a big event you could mm -hmm. have someone with a sewing machine there who can mm -hmm. you know put on strips of beautiful kimono material um mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. can't be used as a kimono anymore because part of it's mm -hmm. damaged or it's getting too mm -hmm. old and uh, i love that about kimono fashion how you can and you should upcycle the kimono because it's such high quality material, mm -hmm. right? I've been, so after watching um, Sheila, Kimono Sheila, 
I actually bought her book on, on Kindle. Um, I think it's Kimono Fashion Past and Present. And so I'm learning about the history of kimono and yeah, how it, it was, you know, they would make children's kimono from an adult one. So it was always meant to be used in another way, you know, and when it was done being a children's, you know, what is it? What are they called again? In the summertime, what do they wear? Yukata? Yukata, yeah. Then they can change it into like, you know, a nappy. And then from a nappy, it can just be used as a rag. Like it was always meant to have another life. And that's, I truly love that about kimono. It's just such a beautiful garment, you know? Ugh, I can talk about it forever. <laughs> that, that was a great talk with Sheila. And it, it was mm. so insightful too. Uh, you've reused kimono in so many beautiful ways. Uh, we'll talk about it in a second. Um, but mm -hmm. in in her conversation, she was mm -hmm. saying how she doesn't do any washing. She doesn't mm. need to do any washing. She just washes uh, undershirt or underwear or underclothes because you don't have to wash kimono. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. And how mm -hmm. you can get it altered or dyed at kimono shops as well. Mm -hmm. oh, so exciting. I'm so into that. I can't sew myself, but I, I love the <laughs> idea of using local artisans using local shops to get things done mm -hmm. so am i yeah. i really am i'm teaching myself how to sew now i have some friends that are you know giving me tips when they can but it's uh, me and youtube university and my sewing machine so hey. that's yeah i'm that's just learning little by little yeah i'm, I'm showing this beautiful picture um kimono material at the bottom and then a lace a brown lace top and an obi that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I love that ensemble. I was just playing around with Olbies. I was like, I really want to wear Olbies casually. I can do howdy. I can kind of do kimono without it looking like a robe, <laughs> you know, because in America, people think kimono and I feel like they think a robe or a cardigan. Um, so I'm trying to like move away from that. Um, but the Olbies are wonderful. And I don't have an industrial sewing machine, so I can't make them into purses and stuff just yet, like Mekong bags, I love them too. Um, so for now, I'm gonna use it the way it's meant to be used. And I, after I put that on, I was like, oh man, this is beautiful. It reminds me of like a, a like an editorial look almost. And I'm, now I'm thinking of another photo shoot that I need to have with Obi. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch the interview with Stasia? Stasia, she does a styling, kimono and vintage styling. She also makes uh, custom made sizes of kimono. So wow, no. I'll, I'll put the link below, but um, she's mm -hmm. in the Tokyo area and mm -hmm. she often like mismatches the retro style and the modern, you know, and then she makes like a bigger size for plus mm. size women. Um, who come to her shop. She has a lot of pictures of... Uh, oh, he's a photographer as well. Yes, yes, yes. I watched it. I did. Kimono <laughs> stylist and photographer. And she has a lot of customers who have tattoos. Mm, 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 and mm. the combination of like uh, interesting combination of kimono materials and different mm -hmm. materials and tattoos, it actually, it's changing the kind of new style fashion I think, mm -hmm. I think right and I noticed you've got some beautiful tattoos as well thank you yeah I have a lot <laughs> I've been getting them more since I came here um but I, I strategically place them so that I don't get in trouble at work but <laughs> <laughs> well it's nice if you can have the option right so you can mm -hmm. have the option to cover up or you can have, yep. have the option on your in your free time to show up yep. and I I think it's getting easier is it as a someone with tattoos in Japan yeah, so honestly, I've never gotten stopped in a uh, onsen or sento yet. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> um, yeah, no one ever said, says anything. Like, maybe they just look at me. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky, I guess. <laughs> in, in this shot, you're, from your Instagram, you're wearing kimono from Vintage Kimono An. Is that a shop mm -hmm. in Osaka? Um, it's in Kyoto. Oh, I love that place. I I found it online, I think. Or no, or maybe, yes, I think I found it on Facebook. I went one day and it was closed. 
And then I went to, I went again, like a few months later, and a wonderful lady who spoke fluent English, Megumi, was there. And she was so nice, and she helped me, and we just ate chocolate and had tea and talked about kimono and tried stuff on, and it was really fun. But she's back in New York now, so I went to Kyoto last week, um, and... Oh, but the old man was there, the OG son, and he's really funny. He's such a character. Like, it looks good on you. I'm like, thank you, OG son. <laughs> and I helped him sell some stuff. It's like some other foreigners came, and I was like, yeah, I went to the ATM before this, so I'm ready. <laughs> but uh, you should get that, and you should get that, <laughs> because it's just such a wonderful shop. It's, I mean, he has some beautiful silk, and it, and it's all organized really nicely too. Like, he'll tell you which ones are very expensive, which is nice. So you're not just picking anything and then you see the price and you're like, wow, $300. No. Um, and I, yeah, so upstairs is cheaper, the cheaper stuff. <clears throat> Downstairs, you're going to get more of the premium. And he labels if it's big size or not, too. I, I just think that's really, really nice for for foreigners, especially. I've actually mm -hmm. noticed that at some of the shrines or on Miyajima Island, which is our famous tourism island in Hiroshima, um, with mm -hmm. the big giant floating shrine and the flying mm -hmm. sh floating uh, tori gate, big oh. giant red tori gate, which unfortunately mm -hmm. is under scaffolding now. Um, but mm -hmm. if you go up the hill is beautiful Buddhist temple, Daishoin temple. And they, on the weekends, quite often have kimono sales, like an old mm. kimono. And it's nice. so reasonably priced. It's like a thousand yeah. yen for yeah. a kimono. Yeah. And every time I go and they have this wonderful flea market, I'm just, I'm dying to learn how to sew. Mm. I'm going to take a, <laughs> a note from your book and uh, start mm -hmm. studying on YouTube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really helps. Um, there are some people that are really good at teaching, so I, I just soak in all that I can. Lots of trial and error, <laughs> but that's how I that's how I learn. That's the best way to learn for me. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of kimono, uh, you're wearing the jacket with some mm -hmm. pink trousers Ooh, here yeah. in this photo. It's beautiful. Tell mm -hmm. me about that ensemble. Oh, I love it so much. So the shoes are my favorite shoes that I got from Insecta. It's a, a, a vegan brand from Brazil. They actually went out of business um, during Corona. And that made me really sad because they were kind of expensive. But I mean, I'm, maybe after Corona, they'll be up and running again. Um, the trousers are from Topshop, but the sweater is from Second Street. Um, and I noticed Second Street is actually having more like curated collections um in certain areas which is nice in the local areas you're going to get a little bit of everything but like in the cool places to shop you'll get like a curated second street which is still reasonable actually um so i don't mind it and that howdy is beautiful i i'm really good at picking out um patterns i'm i really my eyes drawn to them like they, they just called to me. And so that one's actually a pale pink. It doesn't really come off as pale pink. And I saw that it had this white, just kind of lace on the collar. And I was like, huh, I've never seen that before. And so I picked it up and it was in the big size section. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was just kind of like walking around in it. And I loved it. And I was like, yep, this is mine. <laughs> and that was from Vintage Kimono On. Uh, and then I love that bow because... I, Without it, it just, I was like, something's missing. Like, something's just off. And I, that bow is actually from a different shirt. Um, but I use it as a headscarf. I use it as everything. <laughs> and I'm so happy that I put it on because it just really did what I needed it to do. And awesome. I love I love this on its own wall. It's yeah. beautiful. And then it shows how photogenic um, mm -hmm. the area is, right? You've mm -hmm. got the traditional buildings, but also... You have maybe some graffiti, some kind mm -hmm. of grimy, busy mm -hmm. areas. You've got neon lights. You've got yeah. kind of a great variety in Osaka, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was in Kyoto, but there are some really cool places in Osaka. I personally love alleyways here. I think they're really cool. So I kind of want to do like an alleyway series at some point when I get like a better phone <laughs> for a better camera. Uh, I'm yeah, looking forward to that. Osaka's great. It's like my second home. 
<laughs> this um, friend of yours in mm -hmm. black with the cool glasses. That's a really mm -hmm. cool spot where you took yeah. photos. Um, so that's in Amemura, like American town. And uh, that's in front of the coffee shop we all met up at. Um, and that was my first test shoot. Um, and it was supposed to be for a glad, like a make believe glasses company. Cause I'm really looking into like commercial styling or like production styling, like maybe for a video or for, um, like a brand and their campaign launches. Like that sounds really cool to me. Um, but I, I'm not, I love this photo, but I'm not happy in what I styled her in. Um, because I'm still getting used to styling people that are a bit curvier than me. So that was really, a really good learning experience. And so I just need to keep styling and practicing because, I mean, it's practice. you got to learn how to style. It's not easy, actually. <laughs> it's easy to style yourself because, you know, we've been doing it our whole lives. But to style other people, that's where the real skill comes in. And I'm looking to, like, hone in on those skills. No, it's mm -hmm. great. You're doing, you're doing a lot of exciting stuff. And it'll be really interesting for you to go back to different areas that you like shooting at and trying different mm -hmm. combinations of clothes, trying mm -hmm. with different people. What mm -hmm. I love about um, this friend of yours in black mm -hmm. is her expression. She uh, looks so stylish because of the way she's looking at the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just about the clothes, right? It's about oh, yeah. attitude. <laughs> it's so true and now I'm really starting to see the value of like models like a good model a good photographer and a stylist and a you know makeup I really see everything coming together and just making something great I do have something in the works for um like a hat a photo shoot for hats using my hat collection um and that's when it's a bit warmer but oh the photographer for that is gonna be she's amazing She's truly, really good at um, shooting things in nature. So I'm so excited to see what she can do and what she can like bring out of people. And I think I've picked the right models for it too. So they're going to give me the smolder in the eyes, you know, the cool vibe that I want. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you also are very beautiful in all the photos you. of you in these amazing clothes. I love this one of you with the big black hat that you use for your profile photo. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's also from that Australian hat company. I bought three at once. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> and um, it's in front of actually this painting that's done by Jonna Slavey. Um, and she's uh, an artist here. I think she's here for a little while and then going back to England. But um, I didn't like the color version. I felt like the colors were off. So I made it black and white. And I was like, nice. This looks cool. Yeah. And reading <laughs> through your Instagram, I noticed uh, another interesting thing you have <laughs> to do with your makeup. Tell us about that. I love that. Yeah, I don't even. I, I think I feel like I've seen it um, where, where people will do it right under the eyes here. And I was like, that looks cool. But I didn't really like that because I felt like it you know kind of enhanced my little bags like it just draws your eye to your eye bags I'll leave that to the kids and so I started putting them here you probably can't see them because they're kind of small but I put them here and I was like I kind of like that because it balances out my chicken pox scar mark here <laughs> so I I don't know it's just like my my thing so like a wing and these my eyebrows done and these two uh, dots are like my thing you yeah. know, it's nice to have a signature look. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Marianne, thank you for joining from YouTube. Marianne says, I love your outfits. I buy used haori and kimono once in a while, but don't mm -hmm. possess the courage to wear them outside yet. Oh, perfect. What, I gotta, what uh, advice uh, would you give you. someone like how to mix match or how to try it? Yeah, so I'm actually writing that blog post right now on how to wear howdy um, casually. And we just finished the photo shoot for that. But I would say whenever I get one and I'm looking at it like, oh, it's so beautiful, but I have no idea how to put it together. I start with a all 
black base, depending on what colors they are, right? Usually I like kind of darker ones. Um, so I start with all black, just choose all one color. Um, it can be monochrome, it can just be all one color and then go from there, you know? I think that's the easiest way because it's otherwise it might look a little, I don't know. I never want it to look like I'm trying too hard. I always just want it to look very natural and not just kind of like, I just threw it on, you know? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, definitely start with all one color and see how that goes. Or another easy way is to choose one color from the howdy and maybe wear it as like a top or your pants and kind of go, go that way and just baby steps. Start with your comfort level first. Um, and then I think the most challenging way, and I'm still working on that one, is to mixing, mixing prints, which is so much fun. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to take some practice for sure. <laughs> but good luck. Please, um, if you could message me, I would love to see your your um, your outfits. Yeah, yeah there you go. Marion, you've got some little inside advice. You could send <laughs> her a message on Instagram. I know you're on Instagram and uh, mm -hmm. show her what it looks like. And she might have some personalized advice for you. That's awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I one place I would like to mention that I've been to in in Tokushima called mm -hmm. Kamikatsu. It's a zero waste town, and they're Ooh. trying to recycle, reuse, uh, compost. Um, they have a very small village, very active. They're just going for it, uh, wow. trying to to do all these different initiatives to reduce mm -hmm. waste. And mm -hmm. they're at eighty percent diversion from landfill, which is amazing. So they're wow. doing a great job. But one of the great things that they're doing is they're getting a lot of the elderly in the community to come to like a community center and mm -hmm. to use materials that are not being used anymore mm -hmm. and to make new products. So they're making bags, they're making jackets. They have some of these howdy, which is made from old uh, koi nobori, the flying carp fish that oh, cool. the, they fly, you know, they fly in yes. the valleys. Um, mm -hmm. But some of them get worn and they can't use mm. it for that anymore. So they use the material and make jackets and everything. But it's really bright and really colorful. So I think wow. for that kind of jacket, definitely I love your idea of mm. having all one color underneath. Mm. Like mm -hmm. trying all red or all black. Ooh, yeah, and then be... the super bright mm -hmm. jacket. It might be a great contrast. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. worth trying Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was the name of that town? Uh, Kamikatsu. Kamikatsu. I, I talk about it a lot on my website or I've, mm -hmm. I have a couple of videos. I'll put the video links okay. below and yes. I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, Marion says, thanks. I like that. I'll start with an all black underneath. Great. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some of your other, uh, ensembles that you sent mm -hmm. me pictures of so you oh do you want to explain about the book because you mentioned the book briefly was mm -hmm. that a book that inspired you conscious closet yeah yeah it really um yeah I think it did inspire me a lot what's funny is I was already doing clothing swaps so in the book when it mentions mentions clothing swaps I was like nice I'm on it <laughs> um but they really put a focus on mending so there's a whole section on how to mend your clothes, how to darn your socks, you know, simple sewing techniques, um, hand sewing techniques to, you know, mend holes and stuff like that, which is really cool. Um, and I kind of, my partner is really good at taking care of his climbing um, gear because he rock climbs. And I, he's just so good about cleaning his tents and hanging them out as soon as they're finished. And so... From the book and watching him, I really understood the value of taking care of things, taking care of your clothes. Um, the Conscious Closet is a book by Elizabeth Klein, and she has a lot of good statistics on how, on just the amount of pollution that is in this world. And from clothes. I mean, it's like one of the biggest polluting industries and, in, you know, and I'm just trying to do my part <laughs> without getting overwhelmed about how crazy it is, you know? Uh, so I want to have fun, but try and be as sustainable as I can, which is great because since I've been here, I haven't really gone on like any shopping sprees in college. I really used to like buy something like 
every two weeks. I don't know. It was fun kind of looking forward to something, but now I've shifted and it's like, cool. I don't have to thrift all the time because I don't want to keep consuming, which is what I was taught when I was little. Like, yeah, let's go every weekend, which was fun. Um, and maybe because I was growing, maybe that was okay. But now I think it's, well, let's play with my clothes that I have. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth Klein, ah, oh, that's how I, thank you. That's actually how I found out about like the challenges on Instagram because she has a challenge in the book um, about clothing. I forgot what it was called, but that's kind of how I found out about this sustainable clothing movement on Instagram. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for people who don't really know uh, the clothing industry, especially fast fashion, is they, they think if you combine air travel and all the shipping uh, carbon, it's actually mm -hmm. worse because oh. a lot of the fast fashion you're talking about making the material, so growing the mm -hmm. cotton. Quite a lot mm -hmm. of material is cotton, and it's made mm -hmm. with a lot of pesticides. So you've and got a lot that of water. problem, just making it, mm -hmm. right? And a lot mm -hmm. of water. And then mm -hmm. processing it, you've got more damage in terms of pollution. And then mm -hmm. you're talking about the ethical factor that a lot oh, of yeah. people in very poor, unequal, mm -hmm. huge disparity, Mm -hmm. situations are making mm -hmm. the clothes for almost nothing in horrible conditions very unsafe and then mm -hmm. you talk about well it has to be shipped from there back to the western country that's designing it and selling it they think a lot of the clothes from fast fashion travel the world three times before they're sold jesus and then a lot yeah. of it's not sold. And then it just goes to landfill. Or if it has plastics, then it, it becomes a microplastics problem mm -hmm. as well as the, all mm -hmm. that resource, all that time going into the mm -hmm. product. And then people, you know, throw it away too easily. But I think there's so much more consciousness now mm -hmm. uh, than even 10 years ago. People weren't really mm -hmm. thinking about it. So I think you're right on the cusp of something mm -hmm. very exciting, you know? Good for <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think from that book, she really goes into just the wages um, of the garment workers and how these companies can afford to pay them. That's actually not like, that's not a huge part of the cost of the garment. So they, these companies are just being greedy, really is what she was getting at. Um, but I, I really like the section in the book where she talks about uh, washing your clothes. Like you don't have to wash them all the time. And that's going to be another blog post. And it reminds me of kimono too. Like kimono is, you should think of kimono like outerwear, right? That's kind of what I learned from that, uh, that live stream you did from that video. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so you, we can also think of, I would say shirts, maybe if you sweat a lot, you can wash them more often, but, but your pants, you don't really have to wash them after every use. And I didn't know that, um, until a cousin of mine told me when I was growing up and I was like, huh, really? And even now, like you can wear your jeans, you know, a bit longer than you think, because honest, and you know, when you're washing them, some of the fibers come out, you know, and that's, and that's also polluting the water. And, and so if you can hold out just a little longer, then you'll, you'll be doing some real good um, for the environment. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's such a good tip, right? It's about washing mm -hmm. as well and doing so much mm -hmm. washing. And as mm -hmm. a mother of two kids and uh, someone who does a lot of sport and mm -hmm. has athletic kids and athletic husband, uh, yeah. it's definitely we're doing washing all the time so anything mm -hmm. that can reduce the wash load I'm very thankful <laughs> yeah, yeah I bet but my son is so into skateboarding so he just um, comes home soaking wet with sweat you know that's going in the wash I'm not mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not making him wire that again right yeah, yeah we don't Sticky clothes for the next day no no I understand as a, as a roller skater <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you've got some tips. Uh, if mm. people want to start a clothing swap, what mm -hmm. what would your tips be? You have some advice? Yeah, location. That's that's the biggest one because you got to find a place to host it. And and if you want to do it small, you can do it in your house. 
um, or your apartment. I know Japan, our apartments are so tiny, so maybe keep it small and it's also Corona, do your part. Uh, but start with the location. We asked a cafe um, and they were more than happy to have us there. We just had to charge an entry fee um, and then they you know, took a part of those sales, but we included a drink ticket. So it, it, it all like worked out. Um, and so when you bought your ticket, you had access to buying the sweets and you could um, swap. And I think finding the, um, you know, getting the logistics of the swap is the hardest part. Um, so on the most recent blog post, I kind of have some pictures of the flyers, you know, some examples that you can do and, and a picture of the ticket that we kind of use. I would say you should just get some tickets that you can, um, just individual tickets for how many items that they bring. I think that's the easiest way um, you can make them reusable, maybe laminate them so we're not, you know, continuously using paper. <laughs> um, but yeah, location, find some volunteers, um, definitely enlist your friends to help you out and make sure you're kind of rotating them so they're not getting bored in one um, position because nobody wants to stand near the door, you know, the whole time and everyone else is having fun, like, <laughs> you know, the, just like spread out the love and the duties and stuff. Uh, what else? There's so many good, I mean, swaps are so fun. Uh, yeah, the location, volunteers, the logistics. Ah, I would say if you're trying to um, get like a wider audience, you should have it in different languages. Like your, um, your flyer, have the flyer in different languages so you can get a diverse crowd. Um, and then you'll get some cool stuff, you know, because you're not just going to one community. Um, so I think our first flyer was only in English. And then a Japanese woman came who's bilingual. She, she speaks really good English. And she was like, um, this event is great. I would love to, you know, translate your flyers. And I was like, really? And so that was so sweet of her. So, you know, we give her the English and she'll translate it. So uh, the, the flyer and the instructions are translated, which is really nice. And a good tip is to have the instructions like throughout the space so people can see how it works. That way they won't keep asking you questions while the event's happening and you're kind of doing other things. I think that's kind of important. Yeah. And having it, because you're trying to do a swap where people could use it quickly, Maybe mm -hmm. having a seasonal wear. Oh, yeah. So not, I mean, I know places like Second Street, they often advertise uh, if you're changing because of season, bring us your last season stuff because they have mm -hmm. a big infrastructure. But if you're yeah. doing a small event for mm -hmm. swapping, definitely try to stick to the season um, mm -hmm. because nobody is going to want to take home a clunky sweater if it's summer. Summer it's time. Yeah. not going to happen, right? Yeah, that's definitely one of the tips in the conscious closet book in the swap section. Um, she also says to like have some statistics and um, just a good message throughout the room as well. So they kind of know like I'm doing some good here. And mm -hmm. it really mm -hmm. helps if you have like you had vegan sweets. Um, yeah. When, when we did it, we had some snacks. You had like a nice. networking time. So mm -hmm. everybody's not looking at you all the time when you're looking mm -hmm. through the stuff. Because I think people feel really self-conscious, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice to have it on the side so people can mm -hmm. kind of do it on their own time in their own mm -hmm. way, you know? And then yeah. you find people take home more stuff that way. And, mm -hmm. and then people eating, people drinking, having mm -hmm. fun. It's like a networking space as well, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. It was, I mean, I think our second one, because that the, uh, the cafe is kind of small. So we did our best with our four racks, but it got real. People were just like, mm, mm, I want to get the good stuff. <laughs> like it was, it was so funny to see. I'm like, Oh my gosh, they're, they're really going for it. Like, be careful guys, please. <laughs> um, but yeah, we definitely, that cafe has really good food. So they had really good food. And then Rosie, her sweets are amazing. I had, to, I had her sweets for like four days in a row, these past four days <laughs> and people come for her sweets. If you have Rosie at your event, you will instantly get at least 15 people because that's how much they love her cakes. Um, and so it's, yeah, hit up Rosie, trick-or-treat vegan sweets if you want to collab with her. 
um, in Osaka. She's Definitely the one. Definitely <laughs> having like collaboration, right? Like you mm-hmm. have you have somebody who maybe does natural dyes. That's an yeah. a- appealing part of it. Uh, you oh, have yeah. you have an amazing baker for vegan. Mm-hmm. You know that's also about sustainability. So mm-hmm. it's all fitting with your theme. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah, we were really trying to figure out a name for this for this event. We were like, we want it to be eco friendly, but we also love Halloween. Me and like Rosie and I. So we're like, all right, what can, what can we call this? And then I came up with Vanishing Footprints, and I was like, that's right. That's it, it's it's spot on. Like we love. Halloween, you know, it's kind of spooky, but also it's eco-friendly, you know, so it was perfect. You should always have at least one or two costumes or Mm -hmm. using vintage in a costumey way to fit your theme. Maybe invite some cosplayers to join Mm -hmm. your trick-or-treat theme. Yeah, (laughs) because cosplay is all year, right? Not (laughs) Not just for Halloween. Mm. Uh, you have another uh, where we've only got about five more minutes. Uh, mm-hmm. You've got another thing where you talk about what is your signature style. Yeah. So what's your advice to, for people who are looking for their signature style? Mm, I would say look in your closet and see what you wear the most. You know, what do you naturally gravitate towards? Um, for me, it's like a hat or um, some thigh-high socks or knee-high socks um, and maybe like a crop top or something. That's kind of like where my mind goes. Um, I think towards the bottom of my blog post, I think that's it's, it's a really good tip is to use your, like your interests, use your interests and wear them, wear your interests. Like if you like howdy, wear your howdy and kimonos. If you like Star Wars, wear a cool Star Wars t-shirt, you know? Um, In the blog post, I said, I have a friend who wore Pokemon earrings to a party and she met her husband at that party because he commented on those earrings. And I'm like, you could be, you know, finding the love of your life or making really cool friends just from the things that you're wearing, you know, it's a statement. And I'm, I'm kind of a quiet person. And so I kind of use clothes to, you know, move my move through these spaces where you, you kind of have to be more extroverted. But that's kind of my way of, you know, getting just making that first step, you know. Yeah. You try your fashion in different settings as mm. well, right? Like if mm. you're if you're trying a new look, maybe look online. Uh, mm-hmm. Who do you like? Well, maybe take one of their ideas, see mm-hmm. if, if it might work for you, mm-hmm. um, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Celebrities, you know, they're easy because they have a stylist, so you can totally see what they like. You know, Rihanna had a period where she was wearing a lot of red hair. Like, I don't know, see if you like red hair, see if it looks good on you. Um, definitely experiment. But if you experiment. I would say go towards like the more thrifting, like go thrifting for that kind of stuff. Just be careful of buying like super trendy items because those don't really stay on trend, you know. So just be conscious. I'm always I always want people to make their fashion decisions with intention. I think that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. One thing that I haven't seen yet in Japan, which I'm hoping will come in terms of fashion, Mm -hmm. is the library the clothes library where you can be a member and you can borrow clothes like you do books from a library and take it back, you know, and then somebody else can use it. So like special, very high quality jackets, dresses, Mm. trousers, shoes, Mm -hmm. you know, this is becoming something very popular in the States and I hope Mm -hmm. it'll come to Japan. It's a great Mm. idea. I kind hope of so. Renting, uh, yep, clothing, renting clothing or a library mm-hmm. system where you you mm-hmm. have to become a member to use it. Um, mm-hmm. Reselling your clothes, we have that with Second Street mm-hmm. and other shops, vintage mm-hmm. clothes shops. You know we have mm-hmm. in Japan. So there's so many great ideas for how to make the products last longer. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I love that idea of a library. Yeah, I've never heard of that. I've heard of renting, and I think that's really cool because I'll never buy an occasion dress again. I'll just rent it if I really need one. 
but the library thing's really cool because I have some cool stuff. <laughs> when I, I when I first heard the idea of library, I think it's somewhere in California, and they've mm. they've got they keep expanding, and then they found one of the most popular ways to get new members was to have a few wedding dresses because oh. wedding dresses are so expensive. Yeah. And then it, once you wear it, you don't need it anymore, right? Mm. And is, is your friend, is your family going to be the exact same size? You no. know, so that that's something people can get a little bit of money to sell it to these shops. Mm -hmm. And then people can save so much money and have these beautiful high quality wedding dresses to use. I thought that was a nice idea. That's a wonderful idea. I'm all for like making things cheap. <laughs> That's what led me into sustainability in the first place. Cheap clothes. <laughs> yeah. Well, often like frugal ideas and sustainability mm. often goes together, right? It, it's, it's a good fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. That is our hour finished. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, and your red, the red, red. I love it so much. <laughs> My favorite color. Yeah, it reminds me to be cheerful and happy, mm. even even on dull days, even during coronavirus. You have to cheer mm -hmm. yourself up, right? It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love your fashion and I love all your ideas for taking people around and introducing mm. more sustainable fashion, even in travel. And as mm. a guide, I just I mm -hmm. love that idea. And I really hope mm -hmm. you can try it and get some traction. Mm. And mm -hmm, uh, I can mm -hmm. come try it sometime in Osaka, maybe if I do okay. a visit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please <laughs> come. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining today and for your awesome <laughs> comments. Uh, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., we're talking to Winifred Bird. She wrote a beautiful book about foraging for food in the forest in Japan called Eating Wild. So that'll be an interesting conversation. Nice. You to join us tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you so much. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.